Why should New Hampshire taxpayers pay for serving warrants from Massachusetts? He's a wanted felon, and as that, he's a fugitive from justice. And that is a violation of New Hampshire law. Give us a ballpark estimate as to the cost of this raid. I couldn't possibly give that to you at this moment. Folks, uh, we're done answering questions right now. I will send out... Hey everyone, Derek J here. It's June 8th, 2017, around um, 8 15, and I am driving home from a day out at the shooting range, and I saw a lot of police outside of a place in Hampton on my way home, Hampton, New Hampshire. situation was that it was a 22 year old guy from Massachusetts who has been charged with a felony uh, they wouldn't say what felony that was um, but they obviously presumed that he was violent um, they did gas the house to try and get him out they were there for several hours and uh, he was staying with a friend all set. thank you Good evening. Uh, I'm Rich Sawyer. I'm the chief of police here in Hampton, New Hampshire. As you can see, we just uh, concluded a lengthy standoff here at Fairfield Drive here in Hampton. Uh, this evening, we took into custody Michael Ellis, age 22, of Hampton, Massachusetts. At about 10 o'clock this morning, the Hampton police received information from the Massachusetts State Police that we had a wanted uh, violent felon uh, out of their jurisdiction that was now in Hampton. The investigation began cooperation of the Massachusetts State Police and the Havel Massachusetts Police Department. The investigation led us here to 7, uh, 7 Havel Avenue, pardon me, 7 Fairfield Avenue, um, where we had reason to believe that Mr. Ellis uh, was staying with a friend. Several attempts were made to get him to surrender to call to police uh, to no avail, at which time uh, we had no choice but to try to bring him out uh, into custody dangerous as the coastal community. And about, uh, about an hour ago, uh, you saw that we did bring him into custody uh, without incident, no injuries to the officers, and minor injuries to Mr. Ellis. The warrants, again, were out of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. We will not be answering any questions tonight regarding uh, what those warrants were for. There were uh, a number of warrants. There were two for assault and battery uh, with a dangerous weapon, and for two warrants for armed robbery. Those warrants were issued out of the Essex County uh, District Attorney's Office. Any questions regarding those warrants should be addressed there or to the Massachusetts State Police. Uh, we were assisted here this evening, again, with the Seacoast Emergency Response Team, the New Hampshire State Police, the uh, EOD Team, Mass SP, and the Haverhill Mass Police Department. We do want to thank the folks in the neighborhood for their cooperation. This, again, was a lengthy standoff. Uh, and quite an inconvenience for the neighbors and the cooperation uh, really did help us uh, bring this to a resolution. That was correct. Ellis, Ellis is E-L-L-I-S, correct. Chief, how did the standoff end? Did he just come out on his own? How did that happen? No, he did not surrender on his own. He was given multiple opportunities to surrender, which he did not. He was found hiding in a crawl space uh, in the building and he was pulled down from the crawl space. Was he armed? He was not armed at the time. Why should New Hampshire taxpayers pay for serving warrants from Massachusetts? He's a wanted felon, and as that, he's a fugitive from justice. And that is a violation of New Hampshire law. Was there anybody else inside the home? Not at the time of the arrest, no. Did this begin with kind of a low-speed chase coming up the Main Street here? No, that did not. That was a different incident. Chief, at the very, very beginning, you had the first uh, couple of sentences that you had, you know, just information of what house it was. And... Yeah. The incident occurred at 7 Fairfield Drive. Uh, we had information that this su suspect was there uh, visiting a friend, and uh, we confirmed that information, and that's what brought us to this location. How long has he been staying here? Did you say anything? Or... We're, we're not sure on that, so I can't comment. Um, and he was limping. Did a dog get him, or did he just get... No, no. It, the area that he was in was kind of cramped and he was up there for, as you can see, we, we've been here for quite a few hours and I believe that's due to that issue. Uh, the dog did not get uh, why was he in the back of the ambulance? Ellen. 
to be checked. As, as you can see, he was limping as he came out. You can see just to make sure his well-being uh, was checked on before we transported him to the police department. He went to Hampton Police Department for booking. He did not go to the hospital. Were any officers forced to discharge their weapons? No. There was no discharge of weapons. Can you just talk about what these things to go terribly wrong? And obviously, everyone behind you is safe, and he's walking and towed into the Absolutely. I know sometimes folks get impatient when these incidents occur, but we, we take our time. We're very diligent. And everything is to protect the citizens around us, and, and certainly the person we're after. We don't want to harm anybody if we don't have to. We gave this, this individual every opportunity to surrender. We chose not to. And we were still able to take him into custody with a minor injury. Did you negotiate with him via cell phone or anything like that? No, we did not have any discussions with him. When was it determined that it was safe to enter and how? Those go into tactical areas, which I'm not willing to discuss. Can you talk about the, like, I guess there were gas rounds earlier? I'm oh, sorry, you got to speak up a little bit. There were gas rounds or something earlier? You heard some... The popping sounded, noises? Sounded like, yeah. Yes, we did deploy a number of gas canisters to try to force him to come out of the building. Give us a ballpark estimate as to the cost of this raid. I couldn't possibly give that to you at this moment. Right. Folks, uh, we're done answering questions right now. I will send out a uh, picture of uh, Mr. Ellis tonight. If you don't get my press releases, then you can email me at dhobbs at hamptonpd.com and I'll attach you to my press release contacts. I'll send you out the picture tonight. All right? One more time, what was that email? I'm sorry. D-H-O-B-B-S at HamptonPD.com. Thank you. Okay, so after I asked what the raid cost, they wrapped up questions and wouldn't take any more, said they'll be issuing a press release. But at what cost? You know, maybe this guy is really bad and maybe the cops did have to get him. But is this really the way to do it if uh, there were private justice um, and the person that he had wronged would hire someone to um, get him back? Uh, would they be spending all this money? I doubt it. I, I wouldn't feel comfortable paying for this. And yet I'm forced to. All right, that's it.